the trainers, the owners, the people involved in this sport at the ground level knowingly drug these athletes, these horses, to make sure that they don't feel pain, and then in a moment where they should pull up or not race any longer, they'll continue to race because they're pushed by a false sense of medicinal security. Clearly, drugs are a big part of the story, but I believe that it's an outside, there's an outsized focus on drugs in horse racing. Uh, the suggestion is that with a bit of house cleaning, this can be fixed, much like baseball during the steroid era. Uh, that is not the, the primary reason horses are dying at American racetracks. It is in the way they're bred. We're talking about big torso, spindly legs, fragile ankles. Overbreeding. Are, We're talking about overbreeding. Well, not just overbreeding, but they're bred for speed. Speed is the name of the game. So, you know, their bodies are prone to break down. Probably the, the most important factor is they are thrust into intensive training at, the, at 18 months. The typical horse will not fully mature. His bones aren't done growing. His plates aren't done fusing till around six these horses are being put onto a, into an intensive training regimen at 18 months and raced at two, which on the maturation chart is the rough equivalent of a first grader, just to give you an indication of what, you know, what kind of bodies we're talking about here. So they're being, they're being thrust into this, this world, this competitive world on unformed bodies. And then we get into the grinding of these bodies. So there have been studies done in California because all horses who break down have to be sent for necropsies there and, and uh, other states also, where up to 90% of the catastrophically injured had pre existing conditions, micro fractures, what have you, at the breakdown site. Well, that speaks to that incessant grinding. If the Horses are not racing, they're not earning. So they have to be kept training and racing, all, mind you, again, on pubescent bodies. So it's not just two-year-olds. You'll hear a lot of reformers talk about we have to eliminate two-year-old racing. Three-year-old, four-year-old, even a five-year-old horse is still a pubescent. So it's that grinding. Uh, I get necropsy reports from all over the country. Um, some states give me more details than others. Often, I'll see horses you know, in the necropsy report that are suffering from chronic conditions like arthritis at the age of three, four years old. That so again let, let, let me that. stop you there for a second, because and, and again, sure. I, I know that you're not a veterinarian. I want to make that clear. Neither mm -hmm. one of us are doctors. We just play one on TV. But right. you have the knowledge, and so do I, from having covered it and you from having looked at it as well as, as deeply as you have. The simple question would be then, if the bodies do not mature until they are four, five, or six, why then does the industry force what are basically underdeveloped athletes and animals to race under incredible stresses, drugged, carrying so much weight, and be pushed and pushed and pushed, when, if they let them mature, they maybe wouldn't need as many drugs, and the horses maybe would not be as put upon medically and physically? Right. That's an excellent question, Ed. Uh, the, the, the simple answer is it, be, it would be cost prohibitive to wait until a horse is five or six in order to begin tra training and racing them. It's never going to happen. So this, this is one of the factors that, that I refer to as the inevitability of dead racehorses. You know, why death at the track has always been and will always be, regardless of what reforms come down the pike. They will never change that business model. And ultimately, this comes back to these are commodities, things to be used and make and made money off of. So, again, they're not going to wait. They're not going to invest thousands and thousands of dollars to wait until a horse is five or six to begin training and racing uh, that particular horse. It's going to continue as is. And because of that, th these horses will continue to die on the track. In addition, th there are other factors. Um, Again, if they're not if they're not racing, they're not earning. So it's that that repetitive grinding. What happens at a racetrack bears no resemblance to what happens uh, in nature. We often hear from the industry that horses are born to run, love to run. That's true. Again, that's not what ha that what's happening at a racetrack where, where they're being forced to race with a whip wielding human perched atop, uh, always in a counterclockwise motion, which is not natural to being forced to keep up with some artificial herd, again, running at this breakneck speed. 
this is these are all factors that that make this inevitability that I talk about uh, of horses dying on the racetrack. So is it not then fair to say that when the industry says to us and to the general public, and I've heard this right from the mouths of Hall of Fame trainers who say, we are concerned about our horses. We love our animals. We would do anything for them. Again, bullshit. Because if that's the case, you wouldn't put them through this. Is that not just the biggest lie from the horse racing industry who are supposed to be benevolent and protecting the animals? It is. I, I, let me say that I don't think that everyone involved in horse racing is a bad person. Uh, I'm sure there are people who truly care about their horses. But as a rule, no, these are assets. Again, things to be used, expended, and discarded when they're done. Slaughter. We protest you know, around the country horse racing wrongs uh, because we're in upstate New York. Saratoga is our home track. So when we're up there in the summertime, occasionally I will have a trainer or owner approach me. And they think they're very smug and they'll start, uh, you know, telling me how much they care about their horses and um, willing to, you know, bring me back, and, you know, to look at the horses and see how they're treated. And the first question I have for them, have you ever dropped one of your horses in a claiming race? Now, for your viewers, a claiming race is a race where all the horses are for sale prior to the start of the race at a set price. So a $5,000 claiming race means that each entrant would be for sale at $5,000. Roughly 70% of the races run in America are claiming races. If you've been in horse racing long enough, you will have a horse entered in a claiming race. So inevitably, the answer is, well, yes. And then my next question is, would you put one of your children up for sale? Would you make your children, your, your child vulnerable to the caprice of the marketplace? And of course, it's an absurd question and they have no answer to it. And that's the end of the conversation. So that that really is the, the indictment on the horse racing industry as far as them caring about these horses. They are just things to be used.